They include the economy and immigration. What's your pitch to Americans when it comes to the being within its means? Uh, and that's going to require lots of lots of sacred cows for some Let's pivot here, switch gears a little bit to other top concerns facing voters. They include the economy and immigration. What's your pitch to Americans when it comes to those issues? So with the economy, I think, you know, what we're seeing right now is the cost of living increasing. We've seen uh, more and more inflation as we continue to print more and more money out of thin air. And my message to the American people is simple. We have to get back to a balanced budget. Uh, when we're not printing trillions of dollars out of thin air, we're not creating that hidden tax known as inflation. Uh, and, you know, uh, it used to be a rational thing. That used to be the rational discussion we had. Now it's some sort of radical idea to balance our budget. But when we did, when President Clinton balanced the budget, we had the largest growth of prosperity in the middle class we've ever seen in, in my lifetime. And I don't think those things are unrelated. And so when it goes to those kitchen table issues, I'll say, hey, we need to cut government back to where it is being within its means. Uh, and that's going to require lots of lots of sacred cows for certain members of Congress and certain districts to go away. But we need to streamline our government immediately because we can't afford what we've been doing. And immigration, uh, I actually believe immigration is a net positive for this country. If we, uh, if we look at the numbers, if we look at who creates businesses and, and creating uh, economic uh, activity, immigrants are a net plus this country. Crisis at the southern border, but it's caused by government, not by immigrants ability to properly process people through very quickly and allow them to come here to work, which is a lot. I support Ellis Island immigration. Come through a port of entry, have a quick background check, which in the 21st century you can do in hours, not days or weeks like it used to be 100 years ago, and allow people who are here who are not wanted for a crime just to come right through and get to work and allow them to come back maybe if they're seasonal workers in the agricultural industry to take their money back home. Uh, as opposed to being stuck here in the border with our with our giant wall, with the razor wire and the border policies that we have. Uh, I would seek to reduce that and obviously eliminate a lot of these programs like ICE. I don't think we need ICE. We've not we didn't, ICE was not around forever. We had Border Patrol without that uh, without uh, uh, agency. And I think it's time for ICE to melt away, honestly. I've had the privilege of talking to both sides of the aisle, Republicans and Democrats alike. When it comes to these hot button issues, everyone agrees there's a crisis on the southern border. Something must be done about immigration. But the two parties as of now aren't doing much compromising. Where do you think as a libertarian you can bridge that gap? Well, I kind of say sometimes you need to be an adult in the room. What we're seeing both political parties uh, in power is that they are making money and they're making hay off of this issue as opposed to solving it. You know, if they solve the immigration crisis, well, Republicans wouldn't have a scare tactic to throw at people saying, oh, we're being invaded. And Democrats wouldn't have a, uh, an immigration policy where they can say, look at the Republicans throwing people in cages. Never mind the fact that Biden has continued much of those immigration policies. Let's make hay off of this. It's political pro wrestling. It's not a real competition. They're just making up uh, energy among their bases. And I think if you had a libertarian in office, you could have somebody who's like, stop this posturing, stop this LARPing, this pretending of uh, politicking and actually get down to work and sit down and solve the issue. And that's what we need is we need a real broker, somebody who's going to sit down and tell these basically an adult in the room that tells the toddlers to quit throwing food at each other and actually, you know, share and, and get to work. And we need that for this immigration policy because there are people suffering from this. I went to the border in El Paso and Nogales, Arizona. I saw the crisis that immigrants are going through. I saw the conditions many of them were living in. I also spoke to business owners who would desperately hire them. They say, we got jobs we'd love to fill, but these people don't have legal documentation to work. So they're stuck here uh, on the public assistance and on the assistance of churches and other organizations that are stretched thin. And it's a crisis, but it's a crisis that's being caused by government not being caused by immigrants who are just coming here looking for the jobs that need to be filled as boomers retire. After your visit to the border, what do you think then is missing from the national conversation when it comes to the border, when it comes to immigration into this country? I think much of it is empathy for those who are coming here. I think there's just a kind of, a, we treat immigration as some sort of like, you know, this uh, amorphous thing. We don't really see the human cost and the human journey that people come here to work hard for. And I think we honestly need to reconnect that back to the stories of our ancestors. 40% of the people in this country can trace their lineage back to the registry room in Ellis Island when millions of people came here from Europe. And what were the things we, that were told about them? They're going to steal our jobs. They're going to destroy our culture. They're bad for families. They're going to increase crime. Those are all the same slanders that are told against really good, hardworking people who just want to 
your own American dream the same way my ancestors did and four out of every 10 people's ancestors did uh, during the time of Ellis Island. So I think what we need to do is connect that issue back to the greater issue of how immigration in the past has actually created a massive explosion of prosperity in this country and stop with the fear mongering and really start having empathy for those. You know, I imagine someone who walks barefoot across a desert to bring their kids here to have opportunity does so because they desperately love their children and they desperately want to see opportunity for them and their kids. And you know what? We should support that. That's what America's founded on. And I think if we can return to that kind of mindset and stop treating immigrants as some sort of like uh, invasion, quote unquote, that's the scare tactic or or some sort of like uh, uh, dredge on society, I think we can get back to a more sensible policy and really treat them as human beings, which is a lot. I support Ellis Island immigration come through a port of entry, have a quick background. And so when it goes to those kitchen table issues, I'll say, hey, we need to cut government back to where it is certain members of Congress and certain districts to go away. But we need to streamline our government immediately because we can't afford a class we've ever seen in, in my lifetime. And I don't think those things are unrelated toward what we've been doing. And immigration, uh, I actually believe immigration is a net positive for and allow people who are here who are not wanted for a crime just to come right through and get to message the American people is simple. We have to get back to a balanced budget uh, when we're not printing trillions of dollars country crisis at the southern border. But it's caused by government, not by immigrants. Ability to properly process people through very quickly and allow them to come here to work. They include the economy and immigration. What's your pitch to Americans when it comes to the but a thin air? We're not creating that hidden tax known as inflation uh, and, you know, uh, you those issues. So with the economy, I think, you know, what we're seeing right now is the cost of living increase being within its means. Uh, and that's going to require lots of lots of sacred cows. For But when we did, when President Clinton balanced the budget, we had the largest growth of prosperity in the middle. Let's pivot here, switch gears a little bit to other top concerns facing voters. It used to be a rational thing. That used to be the rational discussion we had. Now it's some sort of radical idea to balance our budget, creating uh, economic uh, Immigrants are a net plus to this country. If we uh, if we look at the numbers, if we look at who creates businesses and, and 